Look out. Footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW as we get into the week for kind of midweek footy review, but also the preview. We're not doing rounds. We're just into weeks at the moment because there's footy every day except for Mondays. It's great, but it's also bad. We'll get into that later. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, joined as always by in a different jacket today after a very cozy looking jacket on Tuesday night at Icon Park. It's Bryony Dawson. Thank you very much, Alex Donnelly. Um, I've even got the hoodie on today. I've gone yeah. relaxed. You've gone. You've got a Relaxed, bit of everything. Chic. Well, it's because we're recording really early because someone's going to Sydney, and it's actually not me. I know. I got to get Sydney friends. Uh, friends wedding. Very excited to be here. Shout out to my partner who's behind the behind the cameras. Bring yeah. your partner to work day. How good's that? I don't think my partner would want to come to work here. She's at home cozy on the couch with the heater on. She's she out. likes to make the slice, though, so that's She nice. does. She she is a great so cook. So who's, who's on your, your T-shirt today? This is Errol Goulden uh, yeah. because I've got the uh, men's AFL show to do later as well. Mm-hmm. It's prelim final week, and this one's obviously in it, and I wanted to wear my Errol Goulden shirt. Yeah. Just, that's, that's quite nice. Yeah. it's uh, Errol. What a name, Yeah, hey? whoa, Errol. Errol. Great. Yeah, I know. It's a Turkish because his family's Turkish. Great. Yeah. Good Australian Cruel song too. Anyway, subscribe to our, uh, our AFL Today channel on YouTube. It's got some good stuff there. We had a massive midweek madness show on the men's. We've got our Brownlow preview coming up. Plus, we've got everything covered with AFLW all throughout the season. Of course, AFL Today on socials, AFLW Today on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X on X. It's AFLW Today AU. I just more celebrate everyone's awesome goal celebrations on X and maybe we put up some videos now and then I just have fun with it. And of course, all of our other shows, go check them out. But just Google AFL Today Show and everything will come up there. <sighs> it doesn't get any easier, does it? No. I often think about how we can just just put that in and be like, hey, just go here, folks. I need to hit like a buzzer and it just comes up with like the QR code. Yeah, like just yeah something like that. Little QR yeah. code. Yeah. Do that. Could do that. I might get social guy Leo onto that. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into it because can you smell it? It's footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's always back. It's great. <laughs> uh, news, there's been more injuries because, well, you know, it's the news every week. Yeah. So what's happened to Paxi out of uh, Melbourne? Yeah, Paxi's out with um, a foot injury. Yep. Um, so they sat out the game. They're going to s- sit out the game this week. Um, so, yeah, m- Melbourne are just being uh, smashed. smashed. Yep. That's one way to put it. Uh, Aloise Jones from Adelaide is out with an Achilles, so she's out for the rest of the season. Um, and yeah, then, we missed that on Monday, didn't we? Yeah, and then Tuesday Tuesday night, Brie Davey got hit in the back of her head in the contest and she went out due yep. to uh, concussion protocols. And so she's going to miss the next 12 days, which I think um, – you know, Collingwood are going to play six matches in that time. So, no, they're not playing yeah. six, but there's a lot that of games. Like an, so it's not it's not the time to be out with yeah. concussion protocol, but obviously she has to be. And uh, Britt but, Benici didn't play calf. Monday night either. So, I mean, the Pies are really – they're they're really doing it tough. Yeah, my uh, negativity towards Collingwood that I had as in how they're playing completely wiped now because yeah. they just – I, I honestly think we could get Social Girl Spence to go play for them at the moment. Yeah. Like, they're just that short. They're going to dig into the under nines team out yeah. in Collingwood. And also we've got uh, Libby Birch with broken ribs as well. Birchie's got broken ribs? Yeah, she's, got, she's a test she, from the crunching oh, tackle on uh, God. Sunday. God. So, yeah, so, sh- so she's a test for this week because, you know, you, you don't need ribs apparently. It's fine. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, before we get into just a quick wrap of the two games we've had so far in week four round for whatever we're calling it. Thoughts on midweek footy. I love it because I just love watching footy, but also the welfare aspect of it. It's probably not great. Mm. Given, you know, the KPI. When you think about it holistically as a competition, great for the, the viewer, not great for the players and also the competition to meet the KPIs. Great for the viewer. Like last night I sat there with my family, my yeah. mum was down, the kids, everything like that. We're all sitting down watching a game of footy on a Monday, a Tuesday night eating fish and chips, Wednesday night, whatever bloody night it was last night. The only night there's not footy on is Monday. <laughs> so it was really nice and I just had a moment being like, this is really cool. The kids are really into it. Yeah. Like it was just good. Yep. Um, Tuesday night I was on the boundary for Fox uh, for Collingwood West Coast and you could have heard a pin drop in that place. There was no one there. Really? No one there. Huh. I was having a good old chat with the people who sat behind me on the boundary. You hung like, out with Darcy Moore. I hung out with Darcy Moore and I said to Darcy, midweek footy in the men's, and he was like, absolutely He not. was so <laughs> – his answer was so politically correct. He's yeah. like, oh, I've got uni, so I couldn't oh, make right, it. I'm good. <laughs> they would – They'd strike. Yeah. 
A hundred percent. Oh, but we can do it in the women's. Yeah. Oh, let's so not no, Dar- stitch anyone yeah. up so we don't hit the KPIs. Darcy Moore has better hair than you. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> that was a nice and easy one. <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> put the hook in the mouth. How dare you? <laughs> Darcy Moore might be one of the nicest people ever as yeah. well. Before before we went on camera, we yeah. were just chatting about music theatre because I see him at all the opening yeah. nights and his partner went to Wapa, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so we were just having a good old Looks chat. Like a about good he's, he's a really nice guy. Mm. All right, let's get into the wraps. We will talk about that. So quick talk about Collingwood and West Coast on Tuesday night at Optus Oval. The cheat code, Daisy Pierce. I'm conceding defeat. Most wins that West Coast have ever had in a season and they've played four games. Well done, Daisy. And it only took you four games. Do you know I, what I mean? This is this is growth for me. Yeah. Like, by admitting I was wrong mm. and realizing my faults mm. to start. Yeah, maybe not. Let's just yeah. let's just go. One. Your kind aren't known for that, <laughs> are they? What what middle aged white guys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this was great. Uh, I thought the pressure that West Coast brought all night was fantastic, and I know Collingwood do have a lot of injuries, but you look at the game plan that. Collingwood had, which was just coming out of defense and just bombing it and hoping yeah. for the best. Yep. Whereas West Coast kicking to space, finding people on the run. And it's also like, is, is Ella Roberts? Yep. Yep. Ella, go get it. She was awesome. When yeah. I saw her, she was in everything. When I was, I was looking up her stats sort of like half time to have a chat. And yeah. I, I think she only had like 14 or something. And yeah. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So the fact that she's in there and it's those one percenters that she's not clocking up possessions yeah. for, she was just everywhere. And she, like, I know we've talked about her a lot, but there's a reason why. She's absolutely amazing. Jess yeah. Hosking, I just, She's I just, least some life. she does. And I said that to her post game. I was like, you are like a pleasure to watch at the moment mm. because you've got a new lease on life in footy and you've had to go to Perth to do it. But at, it, it, she's just so good to watch mm. and she's kicking yeah. straight. Yes. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to that in the uh, Brisbane Western Bulldogs game. But oh, yeah. yeah. The good kicking there, but Alison Drennan as well is just also, hi, hi please, please talk yeah. about me. I'm playing some yeah. awesome footy and once again was great. Tackles, clearances, was everywhere. Are they, well, we didn't think they were going to be like great. Yeah. But are they a chance for that sort of, if the draw, like their draw, if it opens up a little bit, which it does, can they sneak to eighth? Because they've got three wins. If they win, what, three more games? Yeah. Six and five. If Carlton and Geelong end up being as bad as we think they are yeah. and Melbourne slides down, that that bottom of the top eight is They'll open. have to build a statue in Perth if, yeah. makes, if Daisy <laughs> makes the finals in her first year. Um, they just look so composed. Those young players, yeah. um, they're, they're composed. They know when to slow it down. They know when to go out wide. They know when to go through the corridor. Like it, it, it's just a really, really good balance and they're, they're backing themselves. And I love shilling in defense yeah. too. There was really, really good defensive marks that were taken all night that shut Collingwood down. Yeah. Well, also you look at their disposal efficiency for the match. They went at about 60%, but they went bang on 44% inside 50, which yeah. was the main thing. Like you could see them finding targets. It was it was actually really nice to watch. And they've, yeah. they've blown Collingwood off the park. I know it's only 17 points, but they were in control of that game yeah, for a long dominated. way. they dominated. And for Col- I can't be harsh on Collingwood. They've they've genuinely got no one at the moment. Yep. They're, they're going to have to go to – because what's the go with the – I know the list size is a 30, but they're at 22 players now. Yeah. So what's the deal with where you go find your top-up players? Is it just like a supplement thing going on? You're coming to play for Collingwood this week. Yeah, I think you send um, a very nice email out to all the other clubs yeah. <laughs> and the AFL and you request a mid-season trade period. <laughs> yeah, you might need that. It's, <laughs> it's It sucks for them. Like it's <clears> – <throat> As soon as one happens and then three or four happen, and then a concussion is probably the worst one. Muscular injuries, you can't really help. Those things happen. Yeah. But a concussion to miss 12 days when you're playing three games in nine days. Yeah. You're missing a third of the season. Yep. Anyway, uh, fan bases, West Coast like, this is awesome. How good is life? Yes. They're like, wait, they're going to win more games than the men in half of the games. Yeah. So the first time getting back-to-back wins, which was amazing, and the first time they've ever won three games in a season. So well done, West Coast. Well done, Daisy. Yeah. Well done, supporters. And Collingwood are just like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, they're struggling. They're going to have a rough year. So Yeah. Let's get to, uh, what is it, Brighton Homes Arena as the Western Bulldogs put up a bit of a fight. They They did. They were better than we thought they would be because pre-game in our group chat, we were like, 
Record. Yeah. Record win I was like, this, this, this could be a record here. Yeah. yeah. And at quarter time, it looked on as Brisbane ended up winning 11 15 81 to 5 4 34. At quarter time, it was what, 22 0? 22 0. Yeah. So after quarter time, it's eight goals to five. Mm. So the dogs, go, they leave and just go, you know what? It's good. They kicked four goals to five in the second half as yeah. well. So they, they can walk away going, okay. We weren't horrendous. Yeah, Brisbane gave them a, a little bit of a sniff, and we've talked about this before um, about the the better teams when they play the lower teams. The better teams can lose a bit of their composure, and the the, the lower teams yeah. play better because they're playing up, right? Yeah. And that's exactly it was like exactly what happened last night. Bulldogs looked good. Mm. There were really good moments um, of composure, and I think that. You know, although they got pumped on the scoreboard, um, I think the main talking points out of that game are going to be all about the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think it's, it's a game of two halves for them. Yeah. The first half, they couldn't get near the footy. They got they were evening up the clearances, but they are getting smashed in possession. It was yeah. like 17-1 inside 50s in the first quarter. Yeah. They were getting belted with second and third possessions. But then in the second half, they've lifted. But as, as a consumer watching this, this was a supremely frustrating game to watch for me just because- You turned it off, didn't you? I turned it off at three-quarter time because <laughs> the Brisbane weren't they weren't efficient with the footy. They were just sort of stuffing around. I'd seen the Sophie Conway show. I saw Bell Pritchard just laying tackle after tackle. I was like, I was like, I've got enough out of this game. I'm fine. You know, Br- Brisbane are going to run out good winners, good on the dogs for trying and not getting, like, destroyed. They scored their highest- Score for the season, yeah, against Brisbane. They kicked five. They kicked four goals in the mm-hmm. second half against Brisbane. Like Tam will be get going today. Just you know, they're recovering up in uh, Brisbane. Tam, I'll be like, hey, when they it's kicked pretty a, good. when the Bulldogs kicked the first two goals of that last yeah. quarter, they did they did a shot up yeah. to Tam Hyatt in the coach's box, and she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> how good is this? Not like like a little bit of surprise, but yeah. also just like really really proud. I think it's yeah and. Uh, after that Port Adelaide game where they didn't kick a goal in the press conference, she was just like, it's not about wins and losses for yeah. us. It's about hitting what we want, having small wins within yeah. a game. Do we win clearances? Do we win tackles? Do we win this or that? But kicking five goals against Brisbane, I know you've been beaten 40. Yeah. You're walking away going, not too bad. Yeah, they'll take lots of positives out of that. One thing that I want to point out about the Bulldogs their back line in defence, that last line of defence, the desperation, there were so many smothers on goal that, yeah. like, I reckon Brisbane could have kicked another four or five goals if there hadn't have been just leaps across the body and the foot to to get them. So, um, yeah, well done. Then Gavalis had a really good game. She had lots of defensive marks. Um, Izzy Lauren Pritch- Aarons was good. Yeah, Lauren Aarons was good. Izzy Pritchard was really good. And how good is Griggs? I know we've talked about her. But she, <laughs> they were saying, the commentators are saying last night, she originally, um, like, grabbing Kenny until she was like eight, came over, yeah. um, played basketball, but she would like, she'd be too rough in basketball. So her dad <laughs> was like, try a bit of footy. And you just see the way she attacks the ball. I'm worried she's going to hurt herself. Oh my God. She's, she's really, really exciting. And I always look for her too. Yeah. Um, Edmonds is really good in the ruck too. Yeah. So I was really happy with the Bulldogs. Well done. Well done, yeah. kids. Taylor Smith's kicked four as well. We can't really sort of go away from that. And Sophie Conway, two games a week, just like, hey, me. Yeah. Really good. Yep. Long sleeves, vibe. I love, I love Sophie Conway. Yeah. She's awesome. Fan base is like, uh, Brisbane are like, yeah, we, we knew. Like, yep. Who cares? They'll but, take it as a win. They yeah. had to win it convincingly. It was yes. a good crowd. Looked like a pretty decent crowd. Yeah, Brisbane, they've got the old faithful crowd up yeah. there. So, yeah, and it's a nice arena. And the dogs are just like, okay. Like, because I think a lot of dogs fans are like, Oh, this, this, especially with no Ellie. Yeah. This is going to hurt. Yeah. But, you know, good for them. But other people stepped up. So yeah, I was happy. All right, let's move to tonight. Icon Park, 7.15 p.m. Traditional rivalry here. Richmond take on Carlton. Two and two head to head over time. Richmond won last, last meeting by seven points. Interesting game this because. Agreed. Both teams off big wins last week in mm-hmm. different circumstances. Richmond blew the doors off the Swans up at Coffs Harbour. And Carlton just survived the hail game, uh, yeah. keeping Geelong <laughs> scoreless. So interesting because they're both on six-day, five-day break? Six-day break. What, what Five-day breaks coming into this, but Richmond have had to travel. Don't know yeah. how much a travel to Coffs Harbour really is in, in, in the scheme. Travel is travel, my friend. Yeah. Um, but the, this will be one in the contested footy. Yeah. Because Abby McKay has been phenomenal around the football 
all season, just in and under, getting it out, first use to a teammates. But then for Richmond, it's like, well, what's Conti, Hosking, McKenzie going to do? Yeah. They just waltzed it out of the centre last week. Yeah, 100%. It is going to be a battle of that midfield, yeah, isn't it? Because be we've talked about that. You know, obviously both teams finding a bit of form from from the previous week, weeks, um, but it'll be about shutting down each other's midfield. Yeah. Um, you know, Gearan, Mimi Hill, um, Carlton's midfield last week was elite and they're, they're really finding their chemistry together yeah. now. Um, I feel like... Mon Conti for Richmond has just been um just been just been mm. yeah she um I reckon she'll get, she she might get a tag but Carlton might just want to focus on their yeah their game plan as well so it'll be interesting to see what they do there um Richmond's ruck Poppy Kelly is out with a, a wrist injury as well and Tamara so- Luke uh, is coming in to cover from her she's coming out of retirement so respect. <laughs> yeah, so she retired um at the end of last season, but played the season in VFL and then ended up in like team of the year. Um and so Richmond contacted uh, <laughs> Richmond contacted um her when McKinnon originally yeah, went yeah, out as course. the ruck with her knee injury Get this back. year. Um so they signed her on a month ago. Respect. Um so I I'm really excited <laughs> to see um her play this yeah. weekend and Carlton has no changes to yeah. their list. So um I'm really looking forward to this, this is an one. Interesting it one. is. So I, we also don't think Richmond will leave Matty Gear in a lot of space either after last week as well. So it's going to be interesting. Is like, do you reckon they'll tag it? Because it's like, do you have a run with roll or do both teams try and tag? Because that's yeah. the thing. The way both midfields have been going at the moment, it's almost like you just like let them go. Or Rich. do you just put Gear in on Conti and then just let like, him go. Just like you two. Like, hey, go to town, mate. We've you know what? We're, we're, just, we're just eating. We're just eating. We're like, it's great. Uh, yeah, and it's also, you've got to say, Richmond's defen- defense has been fantastic as well, especially from their midfield and halfback line. They're only conceding, like, what, 25 inside 50s mm. a game. You're doing that, you're going to win a lot of games yep. in footy. So it'll be interesting to see how both teams go. I'm looking at a lift for both of the Moody's. Yeah. I've expected more from them in all three games so far this okay. year. Okay. So I want to see them get their hands on because they, they're getting their hands on the footy, but they're not just, you know, when when it doesn't stick, mm-hmm. the moment they just get the sticky fingers going mm-hmm. and then they can give first use to all their midfield runners and that's when Carton will be at their best. So yep. I'm looking forward to it. Wow. Big who, have que- you, who have you ticked? Well, I get the big question. If uh, Carlton win this, are they legit and are they underrated going into it? I don't know if you can claim legit beating Richmond. You're, an, you're a Richmond hater. I just. I know. I'm, I'm actually not. I'm a Richmond lover. I'm a big lover of Richmond. Just yeah. do better. <laughs> Soz. Katie Brennan's coming off three last week as well. <laughs> yeah, loved KB. Yeah. Uh, She's awesome. Carlton by four points. Carlton by four points. Yeah. I'm going to say Carlton by goal. Okay. Ooh, there yeah. we go. Let's move on to Friday night. Oh, no. Friday, early evening, afternoon, <laughs> footy. North Melbourne take on Port Adelaide at Wooden I love Oval. when you about the times on this one. But it's five o'clock on a Friday. Like- it's knockoffs. You're at the pub. Yeah. Knockoffs. Yeah, but Watch it's, it's Witten Oval. No one's going to like, Footscray is People 40 minutes from here. out in the West, if you are out there, you're knocking off like 4.30 on a Friday, get yourself down to Witten Oval. Have played at 5.30. Give people a chance to get there. Like if it was if it was around the corner at Punt Road and it's 5 o'clock, like, yeah, sweet. Like a lot of people can just walk from the city. It's mm. it just, it's Witten Oval. It's so far away. And that's all we've got time for today, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Anyway, North Melbourne take on Port Adelaide <laughs> in a battle of technically they could be both prison bars. North Melbourne do have the stripes. Uh, North lead 2-0. and They belted Port by 60-odd points last time they played. Uh, we saw Port Adelaide last week give away, give up the ghost yeah, against they did. Frio. And North just went, hi, Melbourne, see ya. And just- did we talk about Port Adelaide and them not having the fitness. Yes. And that's the drop off. And this is mm. where North Melbourne could just absolutely <laughs> run them into the North ground. North Melbourne are one of the fittest teams getting around. Have fun chasing Jazz Garner for <sighs> four quarters. It's going to be fun. Uh, we got Kay Sheila, who's on, been on fire for the last couple of weeks. We set it after the first game against Brisbane, and then she's kicked five and four in the last two weeks. Uh, Riddell, been playing all. They've all been playing well. Riddell, Garner. <laughs> and we've talked about this like yeah. Riddell is stealing. Stealing yeah. points off. This is this is why <laughs> I, 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 I've moved. I've moved quickly to Marinoff winning the best and fairest. Yeah, because she's been so far and away better yeah. than Anne. Even though Anne's been good, it's been like Marinoff Anne. Yeah. 
Um, I want to talk about Kate Shearloy just for a little bit. Do you know she's 35 years old? No. Yeah, 35. She played for Carlton and then St Kilda. Um, but she's really just found her Spot. feet in this this North Melbourne team. Like what we talked about with like Sabrina Frederick and that kind of stuff and um, Jess Hosking from yes. West Coast. There's some players who have found their new teams in the last couple of years and are just thriving. Has there been? In that new environment. And Kate Shearlaw is one of those people. And I'm so happy that she's found her group there in North. Is that something to do with sort of list management since the start of AFLW? Because you've got, it's like, okay, you've got this crop of players and you're just, you sort of don't, not that you don't care, but you're just trying to get the best talent in the door and then figure it out rather than trying to pick positionally. And now that Shearlaw's found her place as a center half forward leading yeah. up the ground yeah. where you've got, where you've got really good delivery coming to you, but has found her right position rather than same with Jess, who can play that small half forward role, or you can put her on the midfield mm. for West Coast as well. Is it about just finding the right structure that suits you? Yeah, I think so, and that's a that's a really interesting point. I think that list the, management builds. Yeah, and and team culture, and also because you know you've got you've when we first started, we had you know players coming out of beach volleyball who were given a game in in well, AFLW. Or they, were, they were knocking off work as like an accountant, a yeah, barista, yeah. a doctor, whatever else, and yeah. you're like, oh, I'm playing footy tonight, let's yeah. go, and there's been no preparation for it. So I think it, it's also about um, the versatility that's now in the game and people aren't just stuck in their one spot being like, yep. this is your role and this is this person's role and if you're not getting delivered the footy properly, there's, there's not a whole heap of changes, whereas yep. now – the magnets shift all throughout the game, um, and I think people have been given new opportunities to play really well and develop other skills. Okay. Mm. Uh, for Port, big teaks. Yeah, love teaks. Julia Teakle kicking goals for fun at the moment. Yeah. Of course, fr new friend of the show. Shane friend of Goody. the show, friend of the pod. Uh, playing really well at the moment as well. So it'll be interesting to see because just get the feeling from chatting because when we chatted to Sinead off screen as well uh, on Monday, bit of comments going, yeah. Go on, let's go. And you feel like she's not going to be afraid of taking on North Melbourne. It's the youthful exuberance and the little bit of swagger. Isn't it? She yeah. does have a little bit of swagger, doesn't yeah. she? So she's she's a bit... Um, not going to be intimidated by standing across from Jazz Garner. Yeah. Bit nonchalant, yeah. but also like highly focused yeah, and like elite. So yeah, once the siren <laughs> goes footy, footy, footy. Yeah. yeah. So this would be great. So I think, I think this could be relatively high scoring because Port do have... Uh, have had at times a very good uh, flow through to their Ford 50. And North, if you get them on transition, can leak as well because they're so uh, focused on yep. going forward. So yep. be interested to see how Port handles it. Obviously, North Melbourne are probably going to win this game more than likely. But the big question is, can Port get close to North? I think they can for probably a half of it. Yeah. And then it's just, like, okay, go away. Yeah. I think, I think that's where it's going to really blow out is going to be in that second half as we know Port can drop off yep. and North – have just got the stamina and the fire, and they're they're, they're super focused. Yeah. North by four goals. North by forty five points. Oh, sorry, Port. <laughs> Let's get up to people's first stadium Saturday. Gold Coast Suns take on Geelong in a weirdly interesting matchup. Yeah, Cats lead this two and one, but Gold Coast won the last time they met by eleven points. It's safe to say both teams desperately need a win because they're both winless. Yeah. They're on two points because they both have a draw. Gold Coast courtesy of a last second uh, goal against GWS after mm -hmm. the siren. And Geelong drew against North Melbourne, which that could be the one we look back at the end and go, hey, remember when Geelong drew with <laughs> North Melbourne in round two? And we're like, oh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Why are you so weird? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no Prasparkas once again for yep. Geelong. She's not making the trip up to the Gold Coast. And Charlie Robe, I'm just going there going, cool. Yeah. Might have 50. Yeah. After 42 on Sunday against GWS. Surely you got to tag her. Can you tag her? Yeah, I think you can. I mean, she's so strong and powerful, isn't she? Yeah. She's, um, there's a reason why she was the number one draft pick back in the day um, and it, you know, why she's getting record numbers of possession. She's in the top five possession getters yeah. in the history of the league. Um, so, yeah, without a press parkus, and, and you hate to say that, you know, it, it, it's not a one-person team, yeah. but press parkus has such um, impact on that Geelong side. Um, Nina Morrison is working her absolute 
butt off. Um, and I'm just finding there's just not the support there that they need to. Their structure inside 50 has been a little bit off too. You know, they haven't got Chloe Shear in there. Um, and the cats are averaging just 2.7 marks inside 50 per game, yeah, which is not win horrific, games of footy. which is why they were goalless last But it's week. also, they've completely, because of that, this is a completely different team than the one that made the prelim last year. They've got no height whatsoever. They went goalless for their first time ever. ever. But the week last before, week. they took it up to Northern Truth, <laughs> like, What's this, going on, Geelong? This has been the greatest AFL slash AFLW season ever mm. already. It's, and it's, been, it's been pretty good. It's great. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How good's footy? Yeah. Uh, but then it's like the average score is just 20, like 26, 27 points so far this yeah. year. That includes last week where they scored no points whatsoever. But then you go against this Gold Coast team who they don't have a defense either at the moment. Like <laughs> drawing a GWS is a bit of a blight on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that they are, they do give um, opposition teams a little bit more freedom yeah. with the footy in the in in their back line, but they're still trying to find that right chemistry together. They have been rebuilding that back line, yeah. um, so it is going to take a little bit of time. Um, yeah, it's a hard one to. Their disposal efficiency has also been just uh, dreadful. Yeah, it's, it's going to be something I'll bang on. This about is not all a year. team that made the finals last year. These aren't you know teams I mean? that made the finals yeah. last year. They both. Yeah. Like I'm still worried about no height for Geelong. Yeah. Like, it's like so. Who's uh, who's going to who's going to be the one to step up? <sighs> I got no idea. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I can't like. I know what's going to happen. Charlie Robot's going to have 45 and work her backside off. <laughs> you reckon Charlie Robot is going to leave this game with the, have you seen the highest Kurt, possessions? Have you seen the Kurt Henning thing where he throws the touchdown to himself? Like Mr. Perfect, he throws the ball in the air and chases after it and catches it himself. Mm -hmm. Like this is what Charlie okay. Robot could do. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. Gold Coast win because it's at the Gold Coast. Oh, that's why you've chosen. It's literally it. Like this was in Geelong. I'd pick Geelong. Like, I have no idea. Okay. I got no vibe and it's, it, it pretty much means whoever loses this, your season's done. Just pack her up. Yeah, that's what I reckon too. Um, so I'm going Geelong. I don't think their season's over. Where's a coin? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to this is the yeah, game of the this weekend. this is the game of the week. 2.05 p.m. Great time because you can watch this, then you can watch the prelim. This works. St Kilda take on Hawthorne at RSEA Park. R E S P C T. I always get that in my head when I do this. Yeah, it's just nice. it's just like yeah. Thank uh, you for sharing. That. That's all right. Down at Rabbit, it's how my <laughs> brain works. Uh, St Kilda lead the, lead the head to head two and two and zip. This is going to be a bunch of fun because St Kilda held on last week against Essendon. Hawthorne, well, you might not have been able to see it because of the kit clash, but they took it up to Adelaide mm -hmm. and then Ebony Marinoff just went okay, go away. Yeah. Uh, so that was great. St Kilda have been sharing the love, kicking the goals all season. So you've got no one to really focus on. I know Jesse Wardlaw's there. Yeah. But Hawthorne have also been doing the same as well, but injuries have hit them as well. So It's going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be great because they both play a really similar style, right? So yep. um, both teams are playing a similar um, game style, running, uh, running outside game, um, aggressive run and turnover uh, on attack. So... It, there's going to be a lot of space, yeah. um, especially if there's a turnover. Um, people are going to have to run their little behinds off uh, to to get back into position. Grace Kelly is going to clock up a lot of kilometres. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what what you said before, I think Hawks really need to shut down Jesse Wardlaw. Um, she's the the main link between their their mids and their attacking. She's, she's a big dog up there. Yeah, she is a big dog. She's strong. She's agile, and she's able to take those big solid marks so they yeah. can set up behind her. She also knows how to kick a goal as well. But she was quiet last week. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, oh, it's going to be a really hard. Both teams are going to have to play their best game yeah. in order to win. Well, then it's like you've got you look you look to Hawthorne. It's like A. McDonough, Gilroy, West, Breed. Oh. It's all there. Uh, it's it's just set up to be an awesome game of footy. Like, yeah, this is just the one I just want to like, sit down and be like, yeah, footy. Yeah, like, I'll be finding a screen at Randwick Racecourse because they have Fox <laughs> Footy on the at the races. <laughs> cool. I'll be sitting down after Cliff House runs at one o'clock to watch this. Excellent. With a beer in hand. Um, I'm really looking to see how Aileen Gilroy does with the uh, much improved St Kilda defence as well. I want to see if she's they like. Are so well set up yeah, structurally. They are. Nikki they really Dow are. has them set up and it's from defence into attack. They transition well, which may catch Hawthorne out because they are just like, we're going. And if you can get the footy and turn them around, that's when they'll catch them out. And Jesse Wall will be like, 
yeah. to me. I think Nick's Nick's been trying to build this for years yeah. and he's finally got the players, he's finally got the experience and he's like, um, excuse me, this is what I've been trying to do yeah. for ages. And it's finally. Uh, and it's, it's finally working. It's finally um, it's finally working out. So I still don't think St Kilda have clicked and played their best footy yet. I still feel like there's agreed. another level for them to go just watching them over the first three weeks. Yeah. It's like, no, and they there's... haven't had Patricio either. So it's yeah. like, you know. Um, yeah, I'm thinking – I'm thinking Hawks. I was going to say, is Hawkball 2.0 real or is it a facade? I don't think it's a facade, mm. but they're going to have to play their best to get across the line of St. Yeah. Kilda. I'm tipping the Saints. Are you? Yeah. Can't, it's hard to tip tip against the unbeaten team. Okay. I, I understand that. Yeah. But Hawks are only, I know. have lost one. I know, to- but it's it's I'm going with the team that's unbeaten and also at home. I'm going to tip him by a goal. It's going to be great. I'm doing Hawks by a goal then. Okay. Are you just doing that to spite me? Of course. You sound like a stats guy. <laughs> so as he says, like, of the four teams left in the men's, he's Sydney's his number four team to win the grand final because of me. Like, <laughs> nothing else. He's like, I wouldn't care as much, but you. I'm like, oh, well, at least my team's good. Uh, anyway, let's get to Fremantle taking on Melbourne also at 2 o'clock over in Perth. So that means it's a 12 p.m. start for them. That's nice and early. Oof. D's lead this 6-2. Oh. and two. They won the last meeting by 33 points. The D's also looking to recover after their shellacking <laughs> last week where they got absolutely belted by Melbourne. Freo up and about after they beat Port. And now Melbourne, of course, have to travel all the way over to Perth. This is also going to be a bunch of fun because on your tie, he's just going to be in the forward line going, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at all this space. This is great. Yeah, I love watching on your yeah. tie. Um, and then you sort of look at the D's, how they need to lift from last week. I know Gab Colvin was well beaten early by Kate Sheila. She'll be out for a bit of revenge. Kate Hora want to have a better game, but they've yep. also lost a bit coming out of defense with Paxi not playing. So yep. it's like, what's going on there? Whereas Freo sort of coming into this at- they got a bit of wind yeah. in their sails, yes. don't they? The doctor is in. <laughs> uh I agree with you on this one. Uh, D's are obviously not playing their best footy. Yep. Um, and Frio have shown, shown some really great signs early on this season. For me, it's for Melbourne, it's about their big players stepping up. Obviously, Kate Hawes doing great things. But one one person who I don't think has stepped up and is doing their job this year is Eden Zanka. Yep. She's such a good player. She's so strong and she's kicked one goal one. This season, Ugh. she was equal leading goal kicker with Kate Hall last season. That's so, you know, I mean, there's there's a couple of reasons. I reckon she's she's one that can be affected um, in confidence a lot. Yep. Um, so I think you know when she's up and about, she's up and about. Um, but when she's not, she can get quite low and, you know, the midfield isn't what it used to be. And so she's probably not yep. getting the delivery that she got last year. Um, so, yeah, she's one of my ones to keep an eye on. Like, it, she needs to step up and I think, you know, once her and Kate get going, it's, you know, that that can be the thing that gets the Ds over the line. The Ds need to lift their clearance game, though. They're the second worst team in the mm-hmm. competition for clearances this year while the Dockers are the third best. So yep. if, the D, if the Ds can lift that, they can get into the game, but it's like once the Dockers have got the footy and have gone, yep. they're more likely to score. But the Ds lost um, yes. Liv Purcell. To injury, obviously, her face. I hope you're doing well. Eliza West. Um, Yeah, Eliza West went to the Hawks, but then Lauren Pierce, their amazing ruck, is out with injury as well. So there's a reason why they're not getting um, the clearances. Um, And Frio, I think Frio are like third best in – uh, yeah, it'd so, be like Melbourne and Adelaide. Uh, sorry, North Melbourne and Adelaide, the, the top yeah. two. Okay, so we know that Dockers can get the clearances yeah. and be able to get um, set up and wanting to push forward. And I think that that's where they'll dominate and that's where they'll get on top of Melbourne. So I have a great stat that I came across on AFL. Talk to uh, me. The AFLW uh, previews since round one, two thousand and twenty-three for the D's. When Kate Hoare kicks two or more, the D's are unbeaten with a percentage of two hundred and eighty-five. Okay, well, when, that's impressive. When she kicks less than two, they are two and six, and their average point scored is 33, or 34, sorry. So it is a one-woman one, one woman show. So it's literally, <laughs> it's literally if Kate Hall kicks one, more than likely going to win. If she kicks two, you're cooked. Yeah, okay. So stop Kate. Just I don't, I don't know if, you, if if that means someone kneecaps her or whatever. We're not advocating for violence. <laughs> don't, don't say kneecaps. Sorry, uh, ankle tap. 
I know. Snaps a finger. You commentate yeah. curse now. I know. I really have. Should probably protect <laughs> Kate Hoare at all Please, costs. Yeah, we actually don't need another injury to a star. God. Yeah, actually, Polly, who's going to be in this studio in a couple of weeks' time from True Bloods, uh, did say that she blames you for the injury crisis before round one, where your big call was no injuries. So that's on you. Yeah, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I apologize to everyone out there. Yeah, apologize in the football voodoo land. I'll do everything I can. I'll get some sage. Yeah. I'll get out there and I'll make it work. Yeah. Maybe some voodoo dolls and take yeah. the pins out. All yeah. that good stuff. Ah, uh, big question. Can the D's lift after what was a humbling effort last week or is the trip to Perth too tough? No, I don't think the D's will lift. Ooh, you're out. I'm out. You're out in the D's. Frio. Yeah. Flag mantle. <laughs> Stop it. That was too rehearsed. That was too rehearsed. No, no, no honestly, I've, just, I've got, look, I've got Frio written there. So and you just, yeah. Flag mantle. Yeah. Get out. Eliza Riley will be happy with it. Get out. Got to get Eliza back on the show. <laughs> All right, that's a fr- um, Frio by four goals. Um, this is a- Oh, you're like Frio, Frio. Yeah. This is put you the foot down. down. D's yeah. to the smackdown. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go Frio yeah. by two goals. Okay. Let's get to Sunday as the Adelaide Crows take on the Bombers at Thomas Farms Oval. The Crows won the one time they played by 47 points. And a shock to no one. The Crows have been just dominating everyone like they usually do. <laughs> Ebony Marinoff is averaging 31 disposals a game. Pont has got two goals a game. And Hatchard's just chilling going, I don't even have to play my best right now. And they're winning really well. Although she is. Yeah, but it's like I reckon there's another. You reckon there's another Hatchard level? There, there's a full air. Unlock, unlock full air. Yeah. Okay. If I if I see the sleeve, the long sleeves rolled up just a tinge, I'm just like, oh. Just a little, fo- little if it, fold If it over, goes to half forearm. Oh, you yeah, half forearm. Half forearm, like how Soph Conway's been rolling. No, but Soph Conway does the, just the. Yeah. Just here. Yeah, but when she's running, it does roll up a little bit. So if, if <laughs> Anne pulls up the sleeves, I'm like. Here we go. Oh, boy, here we go. Let's Anne's go. On. The Bombers have been caught out in transition a lot this season. Uh, they probably could have, should have beaten St Kilda last week. I'm still on the fence about that one. But now they run headfirst into the Crows at home. Yeah. The Bombers just look sluggish. Um, their defence is going to be under a lot of pressure yeah. right from the get-go. So at least Gamble, um, Ash Van Loon, like they're, they're – Gonna have a really tough game. <laughs> you on got the a weekend. long day. You got here. a long day, babe. Make sure you get on the pickle juice, carb load, bit of sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, bit of sunscreen. Um, b- bombers always aim for that tackle pressure, right? That's what they'll be doing. They'll be trying to slow Adelaide down. They'll yeah. be trying to like stop their game plan of just absolutely lightning pace around the ground. So um, that's what they do well. And I think that's how they'll try and shut yeah. down Adelaide to We've, the best that they can. The Crows are also without Eloise Jones for the rest yep. of the season too with yep. their Achilles. But Caitlin Gould, since she's come in, has been really good as yep. well. I don't know if the Bombers can have the kind of pressure they did on St Kilda on a team like Adelaide who are so smooth with the football as well. Like yep. the pressure that comes on a team like St Kilda who are still building, of course, they're top yep. of the ladder. But they can still be a touch sloppy with the footy, whereas the Crows just know how to deal with the pressure and can – can find an outlet handball, find that clearance. Yeah, they can do everything. They yeah. g- can get the clearance, they get the possession, they get inside 50 and they kick goals. They also are incredibly strong defensively. Like they are tight. This could be the blowout game. This is this could be the blowout that we thought was going to be Brisbane um, Bulldogs oh, last night. Okay, so you're, you're that big on that. Because the big question is, can Essendon put up a fight and win the contested footy battle? No. Crows by 36. Crows by 50. You're an Essendon fan. Yeah. This is... I'm punishing them. No. no. <laughs> is, this a, is this some self-loathing? Like, are you okay? I'm fine. Thank you yeah. for finally asking, Alex. <laughs> hey, God. get there eventually. It's, it's a once a month question. <laughs> 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 I'm a bloke. <laughs> Whoa. Let's get to Victoria Park. Two teams that are not going okay right now. Collingwood and the Western Bulldogs, both on the quick backup after midweek footy. Pies lead this 5-1. and one. Collingwood won this last meeting by five points. Collingwood, as we said, have emailed the AFL going, we need some top-up players. The Western Bulldogs put up a fight on Thursday, uh, Wednesday night sorry, against Brisbane. Now have to travel back, so you've got the travel aspect yeah. involved in it too. Thankfully, it's Sunday afternoon. Thankfully, they're young. Yeah, kids. No, they're 19 and 20. They'll be fine. They'll do eight training sessions before then and be they like, could yeah. have. They could have... 
eight seltzers and wake up the next morning and be ready to go. I have eight seltzers. Like, oh. Is that what you think that they drink? Is well, that I, what the- I, they're young athletes. They're only 69 calories per can with not a lot of carbs or fat. So I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what an athlete would drink or vodka waters. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I like that. Kind of kind of like eight, eight, eight pints. Just get, On the- <laughs> like just how heavy and gluggy you'd be after eight oh beers the next God. morning. Stop. Wouldn't be great. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Sabrina Federick has been fantastic in the ruck this year. I've absolutely loved her. Whenever you watch someone enjoying playing their footy, yep. it, it just it brings me actual joy in my heart. Yes. So she's been good. Do we know if Benici's going to come back or do you not risk it? <sighs> it's a calf, so it's hard. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't risk it, but it's like, do you have players? They've got no players. Yeah. So... It's just, yeah, I, I wouldn't because if, if she pings the car fully. Then she's out, out. Yeah, out, miss the game against the dogs, try and get back for yeah. next weekend. This this game will be scrappy. This will be this will be a lot of contested footy. There'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of mistakes in this game. This yeah. is this is second last versus last on the ladder. Yeah. And this isn't trying to whack both teams, but this is just where they are in their basically in their process of trying to get better. They're, yep. they're, they're both rebuilding lists. Collingwood had a lot going on in the offseason with their strength and conditioning coach, all the injuries, yep. and the dogs we knew they just got absolutely pilfered and they had Ellie yep. Blackburn and now she's injured. Yep. Would you just throw Greg in the middle and be like, go? Yes. I Find really football, don't. get football. <laughs> get football, kick football. Yeah, like pace. Yeah. Because if it, if it hits the deck, she's going to be the first one to it. Yeah. Did you see her first AFLW goal last night? No, yeah. uh, it hit the back of her hit the back of her foot off a Brisbane player. Yeah, it was player. the back she heel. She was yeah. like, Woo! Yeah, totally meant it, guys. <laughs> totally meant it. It just scraped off the back of her boot. That and was And then awesome. there was a footy on the roof. It was great. Yeah. Uh, so obviously not going to be a spectacle. So like what's – the weather's meant to be okay. What do we think are we scoring-wise here? Is this like three goals to four goals? Is this like – No, I don't I, – no, I don't think it'll be that low. Yeah. They, both teams can – score when when they want to. Yeah. Um oh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a really hard even with like Collingwood still have the experience in there in Ruby certain, running off half back. Yeah, Ruby running off half back. And they're at Vic Park as well. There's got to be yeah. some sort of boost that if if there's any Collingwood fans out there, surely you are getting to Victoria Park on Sunday afternoon. It's there's no other footy on. Yeah. Your men's team is obviously out of the comp. What are you doing if you're not yeah. getting down there? They've got they've like they've got Campbell on the forward line, Sarah Rose still in there. You got Sabs, you got yeah. um Rubes. Like there is still some really decent players that can actually turn on and get the game on their terms. Um so if Collingwood have the capability to do that, then I think they'll come away with the win. But I, I'm begging one thing of Collingwood. When you're kicking out of defense, maybe let Ruby have the football. <laughs> Because she, deli- she delivers the footy well. When yeah. you're having these kickouts and you're hitting atmosphere bombs, yeah. it's just not going to work yeah. because the Bulldogs are actually fleet of foot in their forward line. Mm-hmm. They're scrappy, but they're fleet of foot. Mm. Give it to someone who can get it out beyond that first first wave of defense. Yeah. And Ruby's a great kick too. Yeah. Just watching her the other night, she was um, natural footy player. N- absolutely natural footy player. She looks confident. Um, she doesn't hit. She. Do- well, I spoke to her on the on the weekend, and she says, you know, I haven't hit my full my full stride yeah. yet. So she's still got Building more juice it. in the tank. So, you know, this is a game where you e- would expect Ruby. Okay, we, ha- we haven't got much out there. Like this is, I've got to sort of lead from the half back line. So, yeah. um. I think the dogs are a chance. I really, yeah. really do. I was because the big question is: Can the dogs win a game without Blackburn in the side? And then the secondary is who can step up for either side with the team full of injuries. So we're looking at Ruby, yeah, probably Bell Pritchard, even Greg. If she if she can get to ten disposals, mm-hmm. it's, it's like the old Cyril Rioli can kill you with ten disposals. Yeah. Greg can probably kill you with ten disposals. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I've changed my tip since last night. Have you? I've just seen your tip there. So on the on the social graphic that we've got out, it says I've tipped Collingwood. Calm dogs. Calm the dogs. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Um, Izzy Pritchard, um, she'll do well. Griggs, Edmonds too in the ruck. Um, yeah, Gavalis, she was amazing defensively um, last think, night. She can take a solid mark. I think. I trust the dog's defense more. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going the dogs. I never thought we'd do that, honestly. But pick the bulldogs yeah. the at the start of the season. We'll pick, would have been both like, tip the bulldogs in a game. Yeah. We Go should on. do like a goggle box episode at the end of the season, like yeah. watching our our like 2024 preview, our yeah. first episode, and be like, oh, my God, what were we thinking? Yeah, Who I, were we back then? I tipped Essendon top four. I know. <laughs> I picked um, Gold Coast yeah. top four. I think oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going better I than you. I think I did just. that despite you also. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get to Henson Park, 3.05 p.m. The vibes will be high at Henson because it is a great place to watch footy, having played and watched football there in the past, as the Sydney Swans take on the GWS Giants in a derby. It is a derby. They don't call it Battle of the Bridge in the W for some reason. Like, why can't you fight over a bridge? It's fine. Mm. Anyway, uh, one and one, these two. The Swans won last year at North Sydney Oval to open the season by five points. This looks like it's going to be another close game. Obviously, we are doing this show before the teams have been announced for Sunday's game, so we don't know if Ali Morford or Cynthia Hamilton are going to be back in the squad, which seems kind of important for the Swans. Mm -hmm. The Swans probably have the edge on experience and talent. They're just not playing well. No. I think they're like, and we've said this before, but the Chloe Malloy factor, having them out and having that that lead, that that forward line structure – um, I think that's what they missed last week. Yeah. Um, and they just sort of couldn't string it together. They didn't know their option. Like everyone just felt like a bit the same like outside Kilda. of themselves. Yeah. So um, I think that'll be their main focus is finding their their new game, game plan without Malloy and like sticking to it and having contingency plans of where you can get into um, when you don't have that full star power. Yeah, and you've also got uh, you had the bunch of injuries that GWS had last week as well. What was it? Uh, oh, I'm absolutely blanking right now. There was three injuries within the game, and they're all out, so we don't know if they're going to be named for the game. Gotcha. So there was a yeah, calf, yeah, yeah. there was an ankle, and then there was another ankle. So don't know if they're going to be back. So they could be stripped back as yeah. well. And that was there was two and two in the defense. I've absolutely spaced on this right now. It's been a long couple of days. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so f- for the Swans, I think it's if Ali Morford and Cynthia Hamilton come back in. Ali Morford needs to step up. She hasn't been at her best, but she's had a really funky preseason. Yeah. There was a bunch of injuries that she had that she never truly got over because you could tell she was only playing sort of at 50, 60%. Yeah. And Hamilton just offers a little bit more. But mm-hmm. the Swans are just like, let's. I'd just run uh, Zali Goldsworthy head-to-head with Laura Gardner. Mm. Just go. Okay. Just go. Yep. Zali, you think you're good? Run with one of the best inside mids in the comp. Yeah, but she also is really good. I know. Mm. It's it's one of those things I think when I when I look at it, it's the best way for sort of young players to learn sometimes is yeah. just to play on a really good player because yeah. there's a, so for GW this is GW so Sam Taylor um, played on Buddy Franklin one night mm-hmm. Buddy kicked eight on him mm-hmm. but throughout the game Taylor's come out and said throughout the night Buddy was giving me tips and pointers after the contest at you know things that I'd done well oh, and things I should amazing. do better it's like that's really cool yeah. And now Sam Taylor's the best defender in the yeah, comp. Yeah, yeah, so gotcha. So you, you sort of, I, I don't know if that had happened, but it's sort of like that osmosis of learning yeah, by being yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it's uh, McCormick, Barr, and Peace, they're all out okay. for GWS. So They're all out. It's well, been not, not all out, but they were the pulled out yeah, yeah, gotcha, last week. Gotcha. So what are we thinking about this game with the Swans? Um, Montana Ham, she was good last week, but sort of in and out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beck Privatelli had probably her best game of the season, but couldn't convert. Yeah. This would be this would be fun. Yeah, I love Privatelli. She's just in and around. Um, you know, she's really hard at the ball as well. But yeah. yeah, again, needs to convert. You can be great, but it's time to it's time to put some scores yeah. on the board. Little Mini Cooper in the forward line with some pressure as well yeah. off her first game. She'll play again. Big revenge game for Maddie Collier, ex giant, mm-hmm. Swans fan growing up. She came back after the concussion last week. Yeah, worked into it well. Yeah, can't can't Maddie. You're tipping your Swans? I believe. Swans by a kick. This is a tight one. Swans by a goal. Yeah, this is a tight one. I just, the Swans aren't playing well, but I think they'll, it's a derby. So you lift for that. And I think that their list is better as well. Mm-hmm. And the big question from the stats man is, are the Giants a better chance of making the finals than the Swans? I don't think both of them, I don't think either will make the finals, to be honest. <sighs> we had high hopes for the Swans in the finals, didn't we? I didn't. I, I did. I said they'd miss. I thought this is the, the regression year and then Chloe Malloy got injured. And yeah. Okay. Um, no, yeah. I think Swans by about a goal also. Yeah. yeah. If you're in Sydney and you've been there for the prelim, it is a simply must get down to Henson Park. It's in the inner west. You get the train to Newtown. You walk down. 
Fantastic. Always a great vibe at Henson. I think it's the highest average crowd in the AFLW. It is, yes. yes. Get to Henson. It's great. Sit on the hill, have a tin, or in the old grandstand. It's fun. Have a tin, mate. As someone who's done it. Have a tin. I've played footy there and have sat on the hill. Or have a seltzer. They're the only two drinks that exist. There is also blue Powerade from someone who may have cramped up and was unable to walk off the pitch (laughs) one day in a a final in in 33 degrees. Oh, wait, that was me. It was one of the worst pains I've experienced in my life. Didn't have the pickle juice. The cramping is horrific. Horrific. So if you're watching the game, I was on the far side on the half forward or just on one of the flanks on the 50, and I went to run and I just went down. Cramped, couldn't move. The, the run around, I was like, how are you? I'm like, I can't move. Sounds it, fascinating. It was Alex. full body. Anyway, let's get to West Coast and Brisbane <laughs> where there's potential for some cramping because both Brisbane and West Coast on the quick back up at Mineral Resources Park, 5.05 p.m. aka 3.05. Over here, this feels like the coming back down to earth game for Daisy and the team. Brisbane will come here. It's the longest trip in footy though, Brisbane to Perth. Wait, what? The longest trip in football. The long- Brisbane to Perth. Yeah. yeah. Got ya. Got yeah. ya. Longest road no, trip No, I'm back in, in the game. I'm back in the game. So yeah. the, the vibes are high at West Coast as Daisy's just like, you know what? We're going to hit hit our skills. Yeah. Short kicks, hit the target. We're going to tackle. Yeah. We're just going to tackle. So well, interesting to see how Brisbane can withstand that because it almost felt like Brisbane were just going at three-quarter pace last night knowing they had two games and a big trip. Yeah. West Coast. Well, Ali Anderson was like rested for most of the last quarter. Yeah. Stars just took her off and was like, hey, sit down, mate. Yeah. You've and had enough. Obviously, Dakota <laughs> Davidson was a laid out, had a stomach bug. Yeah, apparently. stomach bug. Yeah. That's but then a- she was sitting up there next to one of the, the Brisbane men's players. And you'd be like, oh, if you had a stomach bug. I saw bug, her sitting up there. She was eating a packet of chips as well. <laughs> no, like- she, needed, she needed a couple of carbohydrates yeah. in there to make herself feel better. Yeah. So. This is going to be tough for the Eagles. This is going to be a real litmus test to see where they're actually yep. at after the two wins. They should be confident, but it's just they're not that level. No, they're not that level. I think Brisbane will have another convincing win, but I think I think West Coast will be able to step up. I don't think it's like the Brisbane Bulldogs game where, you know, Bulldogs are um, scrappy and I think that they played really, really well, but I yep. think – West Coast is is a more composed team, and so I think that they will be able to step up more to Brisbane's okay. level, and I think that we'll find um, that we've got a fairly decent match on our okay. hands. Well, I also think that Bris- – like, because you've also got to remember that West Coast played what? They played two games in Melbourne in five days, mm-hmm. and they've had to fly home, and now they host Brisbane. Like, mm-hmm. It doesn't seem great. No. But in fairness, Brisbane played last night, and they played Sunday mm-hmm. as well, so they've, they've got – Quick back up they and got their then a own. flight. Yeah. You think Brisbane will have the class sort of to get through it, but it's the big question is can West Coast challenge at any stage in this game? I think that they can. I really think that they can. I think, I mean, Brisbane's got one of the best midfield. Okay, now I'm thinking. <laughs> now you're thinking <laughs> about going, it. Um, uh, yeah, I think that they can. I think that their players, um, you know, you've got Drennan, um, you got Ella Roberts. I, I think that you've got some really good um, mids who can really sort of get in there and and help do some damage for yep. West Coast. But obviously, <clears throat> you know, Brisbane is Brisbane. Yeah. Um, and they will definitely um, – I'm almost worried for West Coast if they do step up, Brisbane will will find that extra gear that they yeah. couldn't find last night and they'll and they'll, they'll put it out to 70 points. Well, they're averaging over 70 tackles a game at the moment, West yeah. Coast. So I okay. think they'll need that they'll need to have that number they around will, 80 or yeah, yeah, to yeah. really make yeah. this game. I think Brisbane win it probably four goals. They just it's, this is just the cruise control. Make sure we don't lose, avoid injuries, just get the job done, move on. Yeah. I'm gonna be maybe lines by like 36 yeah. points. Okay. Let's get to a big call for the weekend ahead. You've already said Adelaide are going to destroy Essendon, so I'm assuming it's that. Yeah, but also doggies. Yeah, dog yeah. win. Yeah, I reckon I reckon they've got it in them. Okay. My, yeah. my big call is Fremantle put a nail in Melbourne's coffin for oh, this season. Oh, wow. Okay. They'd be, what, one and one and three yeah. after this, the Ds? So, yeah. yeah. There's Great. just that first nail just straight into that. We, I did suggest they might be zero and three, so if I'm one and three, I'll cop that. Okay. Uh, Keep an eye on the Derby, Sydney and GWS. Always a good game. It's a Derby. It's going to be a great, great time. Also, the spoon-off between the Dogs and Collingwood. 
Go doggies. Like one team is going to be very, very happy at the end of the game and the other one's going to be like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. Uh, Hawks and Saints. Like, Huge. Come on. It's going to be a great game. If you can, get down there. Down in Moorabbin. It's such a great it's vibe a great down there. It's a great setup. Did you eat the chips down there? No, I didn't because I was in the media centre and there was no Oh, that's no right. You swipe. didn't want to get locked out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll do the SCG chips this weekend. Yeah. And then next week I'll try to get to a game during the week. Maybe Are you going to put the... bias on the S- SCG chips? No, I'll be like okay. 100% on, Good. on the if level there. If it's anything there. like the Sydney coffee, I don't have high hopes. Where do you go in Sydney though for the coffee? Nowhere. Go to Newtown. Fine. Newtown's great. You'd fit in great in Newtown. It's a great what home. Mean? What does that mean, Alex? Because Newtown's awesome. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Uh, anyway, and for the love of God, please no more injuries. Seriously. I can't I can't take it anymore, kids. My heart. My heart is no breaking. More lo- no more like lower leg issues. Like if we have a broken arm, I'll cop, you know, that, that just happens. Yeah. No we'll, more knees. We'll cop some plates in the face of Purcell, but we- <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're all right, Liz. Nothing, nothing lower body. Mm. Anyway, that'll do AFL today. Well, for today, for the week four preview slash review- uh, we'll be back on Monday. I may not make it. There is no. It's going to be a bit. Yeah. There's no guarantees. You're so going to have an emotional weekend. I'm. I fly to Sydney 6 a.m. Friday morning. The Swans obviously play Friday night. My horse that my dad trains is running at Royal Ramwick and has a chance of winning. Yeah. Is also and I fly home at 7 a.m. Sunday because it is my anniversary with my lovely partner Steph. Great. How long have you been together? Two years. Well done. Shout out, Steph. <laughs> She's got the patience well done, of a mate. saint. Patience of a saint. <laughs> I am a 50-50 chance of not making it home if my horse happens to win. Okay. Gotcha. Which means then my lovely partner may stab me for not being home for our anniversary. You I definitely also- won't make it to your third year, mate. Yeah. And I've also apparently got to work and do the AFL, AFL Today review show on Sunday in this studio. AFL, not yeah, AFL. Yeah, so I'm going to do the men's review show on the Sunday somehow. I would dare say that you have overcommitted this week. <laughs> not like me whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for jumping Chookers. on. Thanks for jumping Chookers. on. My pleasure. Have a safe flight. I'll be doing the show on my own on Monday morning. Hopefully, Stats Guy's alive. He can do it with you. Great. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have an interview with a Geelong player Monday as well. Just going to confirm that with the Cats. We have locked it in. It'll be on the back end of the show, obviously, via Zoom, because they have a massive... I think they play Hawthorne next week, and they're pretty pumped up about that. But anyway, remember to smash a like across all the socials, see us doing some cool stuff. Social Girl Spencer's been putting up a bunch of that uh, ASICS collaboration day we did with the AFL. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. W Stars. So the full video is coming very soon, so you can see Stats Guy playing footy with his heroes. Mm. It's really fun. There's a bit of acting going on. A bit of acting as well. But, of course, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, threads, TikTok, X, all that good stuff. AFL Today on YouTube. Subscribe, star, thumbs up, comment, please a review. Thanks to the person who commented about the background being a little bit too bright when you're watching. So gun producer Gerald is all over that. Make sure you check out the AFL Today show, Cricket Today, Football Today, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets for all of your horse racing action. I think we're done and dusted. Get around oh, yeah. up like you are about to. Are you a Qantas or Virgin Lounge? Oh, Virgin Lounge, Virgin please. Lounge. Thank you. Oh, it's too good for us. Take that, Alan <laughs> Joyce. I know he's not in the job anymore. But anyway, that's it. We'll catch you on Monday for more AFLW today. Till then, look after yourself. And remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back.